Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Monday. It's Monday, the 4th of May, and that's week three of home learning. I hope you had a good, positive week last week, that you learned lots and that you enjoyed yourself as well. I know there's a huge amount going on. For me, a highlight or a low light was Wednesday afternoon with the tea party. The cup of tea was delicious, but the cake I made, unfortunately, was not quite so positive. It wasn't a great cake. But seeing some of the photographs that you posted, it looks as though you made some absolutely delicious stuff. So very well done. And I hope they're as tasty as they look because they looked absolutely gorgeous. Friday afternoon, we had the bear themed afternoon and we also had DJ Ray with another great set. And I know there's lots of good work. I know there are lots of fun clubs and lots going on last week. And I hope you had a really good time. Just to reiterate a, a point I made last week, that if you're not sure about the work that you have to do, if you're struggling a bit, or if you want a bit more extension, or you just don't understand what you've been asked to do, please don't hesitate to contact the member of staff. You know, they really want to help you. Your teacher's really keen for you to do well. So just make contact with them, and you can use a, a closed email on the classroom site. So please don't be afraid to contact them. They'd love to, to work with you and communicate back to you. Now, speaking of challenges, last week, the Headmaster's Challenge was all about climbing. And there was some fantastic climbing going on all last week. Some of you have sent me emails. Some of you have sent me photographs or even videos about what you've been doing. And it's been amazing. It's been absolutely brilliant. I don't want to mention names, but I want to go through some of the people who've reported what they've done so I can share it with you. So I hope you can recognise yourself. So first of all, to year three, led by the indomitable Mrs Gill and Grandma Gill, if you look closely at the spreadsheet. Now they've climbed over the height of Everest between them. That is superb climbing. So very well done, year three. You must be exhausted after all that, but very well done. Very well done to pre-prep as well. Now pre-prep, they've got slightly smaller legs, so probably find it a bit more of a challenge. But do you know what they've done? Between them, they've climbed over the height of the Matterhorn, which is a, a great mountain in the Alps. So very well done to pre-prep. And I know there was a young lady in pre-prep whose ambition was to reach the highest point in the Netherlands. And from what I can gather, she was very successful in that. So well done for achieving that. Now, there were other great climbers as well. In year six, three people have independently told me what they've done. So there was a young lady who individually managed to climb the equivalent to Monument Mountain in Washington State, America. Great climbing, well done. Another young man with his mother climbed to the top of the Empire State Building. Now that was fairly early on in the week, so I'm guessing they've done a lot more climbing since then. You know, great achievement, so well done to both of you. And there's also someone else in Year 6 who's been singing and dancing his way to the top of Ben Nevis, and the proof of that is on Facebook. So if you don't believe me, watch Facebook. There he is, climbing up, so well done. There's a family with a member in year seven and year five who have conquered an alpine peak. And I know a year seven boy and his year four sister have managed to climb to the top of Mount Etna, which is over 3,000 metres. So that is quite outstanding. And in fact, there's been brilliant climbing all the way through by lots and lots of you and your families as well. Not just your mums and dads, but I'm sure your grandma and granddad. Maybe cousins, uncles, aunts, nieces, nephews as well. So well done on meeting the challenge. But before I finished here, I wanted to say a special well done to a young man in year five who's been trying to conquer Everest by himself and raising money for the NHS at the same time. Now there's details on the Facebook about this, but the last time I looked... 
he was very, very close to the top. And as I record this, who knows, maybe he's reached the top. So well done to you, young man in year five. What a great achievement. Now, I wanted to draw a parallel between the challenge of climbing and other challenges that you might face. Now, mountains can look pretty terrifying, pretty steep as well, and it looks sometimes as though they're almost impossible to climb. And unless you take the first step, at least, they will be impossible to climb. So every challenge, every mountain, or whatever the challenge is, always requires you to take that first step. And there's a famous saying that goes along the lines of every journey starts with a small step. Now, we're not mountain climbing this week, but you are facing other challenges as well. And what I, can, what I want to urge you to do is don't be afraid to take that first step. Some of the challenges, maybe they're maths or science or English related. Maybe they're physically related. Maybe you want to do a 5K run and that's a dream that you have, but you haven't yet started. But whatever your challenge is, be brave, confront the challenge, take the first step. And as soon as you start the journey, things become a lot easier. So if you have that attitude this week, whatever the challenge is, whatever you may be put off to now, maybe it's joining a club, be brave and take that first step, meet the challenge head on. And speaking of challenges, we have got 11 new clubs for you this week. Now they range from engineering to art, and from photography to cookery and lots, lots more. I happen to have a quick look in the cookery club and I've got to say I've spotted their, spotted their a recipe from Mrs. Lack and it involves chocolate and it involves chocolate oranges and it looks absolutely delicious and I'm fairly sure I'm going to be having a go at that at some point this week. So have a look at all the clubs, take the first step, enjoy them. Lots and lots of exciting challenges and lots and lots of adventures there in Clubland. So enjoy those, make the most of those opportunities. Now, one of the reasons the new clubs were added is because we read your Friday review comments. So every week, Mr. Lack puts up a review, what he calls the Friday review, for you to write down what you're particularly enjoying and what you might be struggling with. And by reading these, we get an idea of how we can develop and refine the home learning still further. Now, a lot of you have already filled in the Second Week Friday review, and we're very grateful. Thank you very much. But please can I ask those of you who have not yet filled it in to have a go at doing that. And it's being kept open today, Monday, to give you the chance to fill in the review. So please fill that in for us. Thank you. Now, one of the other challenges this week is on Wednesday afternoon. It's the Durlston family event. Now, so far, we've had the, the brilliant boats and we had the tea party, even though my cake was a bit dodgy, on Wednesday, which was pretty good fun. But this Wednesday, we're going the next step and Mr. Lack has organised or set up the Durlston family camp out. Camping inside or outside. Now I check the forecast and it's sun, sun, sun. So Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday evening and Wednesday night should be phenomenal fun. So get out there, take part in the family event, go camping. And if you don't want to camp outside, camp inside as well. That's just as good. Maybe not quite so chilly, but it'll be good fun. So make sure you get involved in the family event this week, the Durlston family camp out Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday morning and post your videos and post your photos of your camping experience. We'll love to see those. Now, I have to set the challenge for this week. Now, as you probably know, it's a bank holiday on Friday this week. Now, usually bank holidays are on Monday, but the bank holiday is Friday this week. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because the reason it's Friday is because it's the 75th anniversary of VEDA. Let me start that again. The 75th anniversary of VE Day. Now VE stands for Victory in Europe and that was Victory in Europe at the end of the Second World War. But it wasn't the end of the fighting in World War II because there was still fighting in the Far East and the war didn't really end until VJ Day 
on the 15th of August later in the year. But this Friday commemorates the 75th anniversary of Victory in Europe Day, when the fighting stopped in Europe, when the Allies accepted the surrender of Germany. Now there'll be lots of commemorations you'll see on television and you might read about and you'll certainly see online as well. But my challenge to you today and for this week is to find out how members of your family were affected by the war. How individuals in your family, maybe it was your grandparents or your great-grandparents or your great-great-grandparents or uncles or aunts, how were they affected by the war? Maybe they were fighting the war in the Navy, the Air Force or in the Army. Maybe they were in the Land Army. Maybe they were evacuated. Maybe they were a young child in the war and saw the war through a child's perspective. So I want you to find out as much as you can about how members of your family were affected by or were involved in the war. Now, when I first started teaching, a long, long time ago now, I set this as a task for a year nine class I had. And one girl went to interview her grandmother. And her grandmother had been working in a factory in a war, in the war, rather. Now, factories were always a target for bombing raids because if they could destroy the factory, the bombers could bomb the factory, that could affect the ability of Britain to fight the war. Now, this factory that was up in Leeds was never, ever bombed. And one of the reasons it wasn't bombed is because it camouflaged itself, it disguised itself. And the way they did that is they put grass on the roof. And as well as that, they put some cows, and got three or four cows on the roof as well. Now, they tethered the cows so that the cows can wander to the edge and then fall off and at best severely injure themselves. But it did mean that when the bombers flew over that part of Leeds or where the factory was situated, when they looked down for a target, they didn't see a factory there. They just saw a field or what they thought was a field with cows in and they continued flying. Now, that girl never knew that story. I never knew that happened in the war until she talked to a member of her family. Now, you not be able to talk to someone in your family who was actually alive in the war. Maybe you will. But there are certainly stories that your family will be aware of. So what I want you to do, my challenge this week, is for you to find out and then to share with us, if your mum and dad allow us to do that, by video, by a piece of writing, maybe by photographs, by a presentation, but share with us stories of how your family was impacted or affected by or involved with World War II. And I'm sure it would be absolutely, absolutely fascinating. Now, before I go, I know that there are some birthdays coming up this week. I know that um, Daniel had his birthday on Saturday, so I hope that went well, Daniel. As I know Mr Lack tends to read the birthdays out, but I do know coming up this week, we've got a birthday for Fabian in year eight, for Ben in year seven, for Callum in year five, for Amelie in year four, and for Isaac in year seven. So I hope you all have great birthdays. So that's the end of the broadcast. Before I finish, I just want to say I hope you have a good week. I hope you work hard. Remember to talk to your teachers if you need any sort of support and they'd be delighted to support you. And also remember, before we finish, that that challenge from week one, which was the acts of random kindness, is continuing. So make sure that you continue to be kind to members of your family. I hope you have a great week. Lovely talking to you and talk to you again soon. Bye bye.